Oh, look who's out, Pumpkin. Are you gonna do it? Don't run away, Pumpkin. Don't run away, there's no cookies if you run away. I said the C word, now I have to give her cookies. Oh, you heard that too, huh, Turbs? I'm gonna get you some treats. Anybody else have a pet cabinet in their house that's just gotten out of control? Lots of seniors here, that's what happens. How many are we gonna do today? I'm thinking just like three or four. Not very healthy, here you go, Pumpkin. There you go. Some positive reinforcement for not running away from the camera. What, you don't want it? Sometimes she only wants them if I throw them. That, that's, I'm not, what are you gonna do? Nothing, Tobes? Toby? Good boy, okay, I was about to do the poke test. Make sure he's still with us. I know, that sounds very grim. You know how it is. There you go, you gotta do something for it. Yep, that was a good set. Excuse me, excuse me. No, you don't have to do anything for it, but you're just a good boy. You're such a good boy, eh, Toby? <sighs> hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. It's, uh, I was gonna do some yard work, because I need to. Talked in the last video. The last video was really just the beginning of this video. I don't really think I explained that in that video. I have a few planters that I need to get taken care of. I talked in a different, I'm not going out. The reason we're in here is because it's very hot, like really hot. I think the heat index is like 102 right now. So this seems like a good time to run to the store, grab any plants I might need, and uh, when it cools off in the evening or in the early morning tomorrow. Can maybe get some stuff done outside. There's the seashell planter, two of those that I need to get some succulents for. And I need to figure something out with the drip for this hydrangea tree out here. Just bear with me. Y'all have seen it a bunch of times. I don't need to go out there. Don't make me. I actually don't mind the heat. It's just not great for the camera. Yes, there's still Easter eggs in there. Good news though, found the lemons and citrus that are supposed to be in there. That's what happened. Somebody was asking why there's still Easter eggs in there. Because I misplaced the filler that was supposed to be in there, but found it just like a week ago. I know I should do it. Just, I'm never inside. It's summer. I'm always outside. Who cares? But leave me alone. The hydrangea planter, this one right here. The other one's fine. There's two of them there. You can't see the other one. I have been watering this thing just constantly. Been talking about that basically since what? May. If the drip just isn't cutting it with that one, I only have to give it just a little bit of water and everything perks right back up. It's just the drip is not, it's not doing what it's supposed to do for that section. There's not quite enough pressure to keep that particular pot happy. So get a half inch drip line from the store and see if at some point can't get something else run, not just for that plant, but maybe I'll put that plant and some new drip heads for the driveway all on one thing. So I think it'd be nice to get the driveway cleaned up and have an arrangement of pots by the gate there. Not doing that in this video, but just getting prepped for it. You can run to Lowe's and Home Depot and just see what's out there at the nurseries. It's right when I'm leaving that she just turns into an absolute sweetheart. Where are you going? Pumpkin. Pumpkin, where are you going? Is some place important to be? Got an appointment, Pumpkin? Yeah, like look at how wilty, I just watered it. A good heavy watering, but it should be looking better here. Oh, freaking hot in here. First, I set this thing up. It's an air freshener. I didn't put the actual freshener in it. Is this going to start? Cars gave me a lot of trouble getting going. Okay. Yeah, that's fun. That was worth $2. But it is starting to smell pretty doggy in here from, you know, the dogs. Yeah, that was fun. Go to the hardware store. Do you know what I didn't do, though? I didn't write anything down. I didn't make a list. Should have made a list. It's fine. Figure it out. Those are nice. Angelonias, verbena, some kinda sad looking tomatoes. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Stuff's looking good. I don't hate that there's so many drop and grow things just cause the time of year forgotten, didn't get around to doing your garden pots, whatever the case. Maybe you could grab one of those instead. I got distracted. These look so similar to the tattoo apricot vinca that I need for that planter, but it's just not quite the same. Close enough to make it worth it. No, 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 no. Took my sunglasses off. Those are red. Not at all orange. Not even close. Oh, it's not what I need, but it's nice to see the tattoo type of vinca at the big box stores. No, I mean, I prefer to support the not big box stores, local growers more. Is this just a really sad looking? No, it's not. Red candy. If they had more of those, I would buy them, but no, don't see them. Hey, these are fun. The purple vinca, purplish blue. I kind of like those. Plenty of fillers and spillers, which by the way, in the spring, where, where are you? Where are these? Never see them. 
I bet these are beautiful when they're in the sun and opened up with flowers. Portulaca is so pretty. Hey, yeah, pretty too. Marigolds, coleus. I'm actually very pleased with the selection that I'm seeing here. Even with the baskets, it's looking pretty good just considering the heat that we've had. Oh, loving the pentas. Those are so pretty. Not my favorite color combination though. There's a pale pink in there that's bugging me. Still some sun patients out. Looks like mostly perennials over there. Yeah. Some dwarf bananas, which they're not listed as hardy here, but usually you throw some mulch on an acuminata and they'll come back here. These are nice looking. Well, that's just a red back here. Amarillo gold. Huge flowers on those. Like giant. Look how big those flowers are. Nice looking cannas, hydrangeas, getting lots of sun and still looking okay considering that, well, most of them are. I spoke too soon. Good amount of alocasias here too. The ones they had at Lowe's this year looked good, but almost all of them had spider mites, which isn't shocking considering how dry the air was this year and alocasias that are spider mite magnets. But still disappointing to see. I think that's. Yeah, that's everything. Well, no, it's not. There's some succulents over here. They're looking pretty good. Nice full arrangements and big baskets. 40 bucks. That's pretty good. Actually, this one, look at that. Oh, that's beautiful. Here's one that's down lower. I like that. Whatever it is, some sort of aeonium. Gorgeous outline on the foliage. Is this one up here the same or is it better? Let's find out. Ah, that looks really good. I don't think I $40 like it, but it's just that one aeonium. That's what I'm assuming it is in there. It's really pretty. If they had that in a container on its own, I would definitely buy some. Hey, this is fun. Six pack of Echeverias. That would be enticing if they looked better. $13 though, I guess that's not that bad. I have to remind myself that everything costs more now than it used to be. You know, back in the day, you could get a lot more for your buck with succulents. Look at that like someone's been thieving. Oh, that's a nice looking Echeveria. Could use some cleanup, but that's gonna be beautiful when it gets flowering. There's a whole bunch of them. I like this one, because it has what looks like a third bud coming out of it. It doesn't say, it just says succulents. Oh, Esmeralda, Never mind. And 12.98. that's not bad. I think that would be a good one to take home. I feel like that pile right there, that alone basically sums up what the spring and summer's been like in St. Louis. How's the weather been in St. Louis? There it is, right there. Walked away from my cart too long, someone just walked off with it. That's on me, don't walk away from your cart if you don't have anything sitting in it. More baskets. They're very well stocked. Usually there's not this much here this time of year. Okay, maybe I spoke too soon. They're better stocked than I would expect. These are gorgeous. These verbena baskets. I think they were going for a red, white, and blue thing and end up with a pink, white, and lilac color scheme. It works, I like it. Look at those. Look how big and flowy. All the creeping Jenny are in these. Looking great. Any chance of some tattoo apricots? You don't know what I'm referring to there. I have some planters. I have a couple planters by my pool and I only bought one vinca. I needed two, so one of them has a nice looking peachy apricot colored vinca in it and the other one does not. It's not the end of the world, but I'm just keeping my eyes peeled in case maybe someplace might still have them. Looks good. Those are nice. Very colorful. Oh, little Exoras. I love Exoras. Nice looking plants. I do need to grab a hibiscus plant. Doesn't have to be a nice one, just there's supposed to be three that get rotated around for the iguana and the tortoise habitats. Uh oh. All right. Slim pickings on the vines, but I have a couple of arbors that I wanted to put up on the queen palms that are up against my house. It's late to get going with that, so I figured I'd just stick with an annual. And uh, this is, well, it's all they have. I don't think it's an Alice DuPont, but it looks similar, but the leaves are a little bit smaller. I would prefer to go more that Diplodinia Mandevilla route, but all I'm seeing are the shrub type Diplodinias. Boxwood topiaries are only like 40 bucks. Need a bigger cart and then more use, which I need more of. There are some giant boxwood shrubs back there that are gonna be, I think, 20 or 30 bucks. I lost track of the prices on these things, but after that discount. Yeah, gonna need a bigger cart. Have yet to get anything on my list that I don't actually have, my mental list. Hey, uh, those look nice. Elderberries or sumac. Yeah, sumacs, those are beautiful. 
Got some Roselias and some little palms over there. Okay, I'm thinking we'll do a quick walkthrough of the rest of the plants and then I'll grab the big cart. So once I have that big cart, it's me making so much noise. That, oh, that's a Eugenia, I don't want that. More annuals, looking nice. They still have impatience, which is very surprising. Not normal for this time of year. Like a lot of impatience, that's so good. Fuchsias are looking the way fuchsias look in July. It's way too hot here for them. For most of them, those hibiscus look good. I like those flowers. Pentas, salusias, marigolds, lots of annuals. There are some thirsty things, it's just the nature of the way plants look at a nursery, even under shade cloth, and the heat index is like 102. Okay, hey, jackpot. Needed some Sempervivums. They have Sempervivums. Okay, I think that's good. Y'all get the gist of it. Clearance plants, annuals. I'm gonna get the plumbing stuff I need and then head over to Lowe's. Yeah, I forgot the tropical plants, the tropical plant champ. I'm so sorry. Monsteras, beautiful. Tiny little Adenidias, bigger Adenidias, an extremely overpriced Majesty palm in there as well, and some baby queens, which are cute. I love queen palms when they're small like that. That always That's why I have so many. It's because I see them when they're smaller, and then I just can't resist. So don't worry, we'll talk about it when I get back to the house. I'm going to have to be in and out of Lowe's very quickly. Not like I'm really going to be able to get any more into the car as it is, right? <laughs> you see how prepared I was to buy plants? Just got the one little, one little box there. This is a flooring sample that I need to return, so probably should move that and not get dirt all over it. These are all, all samples. Maybe I can just do that with it. These are LVP. I'm not worried about those, they'll be fine. Okay, and they're cheaper too, but much, much, much smaller. Kind of, I mean, it's a vine, they'll grow quickly. Whatever, it's fine. It's like $3 cheaper after the 50% off that was all the stuff at Home Depot. That was a weird, weird, weird way to put that. Not as much to look at plant-wise here. That's basically it. Some Prince Tuts. Some nice looking gumfrinas over there too. That's something I didn't plant this year that I wanted to or some gumfrinas. Okay, been a good four or five weeks since I was here and apparently the mites are still a problem. Geeved out and like itchy just standing next to those things. This is why I was so pleasantly surprised with what they had at Home Depot because this is more typical of what I've been seeing around this time of year around here. It's just not much of anything annual wise. Even the Semper Vivums don't look that great. Kind of cooked. I've always loved Lowe's but eh, just hasn't been doing much the last few years. a tree stake in the garage. Oh, it turns out the thing, I forgot I needed to get ratchet straps and a 2x4 because I was going to do the thing that I talked about in the last video where I put a 2x4 on the side of the pot and then ratchet strap the tree up. But then I remembered I had this tree stake in the garage and I was like, well, I could give that a try because that's something I can actually like really get down there into the pot when I try and do this with wooden stakes. They're never sharp enough, so this is seems to be working. I've gotten it down probably a good foot, foot and a half, I'm gonna try and get it down further and then get this tied up and then we can look at the plants. I never made the transition of being at Lowe's and then leaving. I left Lowe's, now I'm home and this is what's happening. Oh, really? What was the point of that? Why would you bother doing that? And why is that down there? Did you do that? That's supposed to be over there. Did you do that? Yeah, he did that. <laughs> Such a good boy. Doesn't that look better? I guess I didn't, not guess, I know I didn't give a very much of a before and after at all of this, but it's been around the videos, I've talked about it a lot. I wasn't even going to film it, and then I realized, well, I've been talking about it a lot, so I should probably show that I'm staking it up. I did this tonight for a reason. We're supposed to have storms tonight. Is that loud? It's probably very loud. With the storms and everything, I figured this would be a good time to restake it so I can get an idea of the stability that... The, it will have to have in order to endure wind and rain and everything. It looks so sad and wealthy. The flowers down below though, they look fine, right? And I think those look pretty good considering it's possible. Maybe I could have stressed it out by staking it like that. I've staked it before and it was never a problem, but I don't know. It's a pretty drastic change. Just have to wait and see. 
you just flicked water right into my camera and the touch screen turned the camera off. It was getting to a point though where I was starting to get concerned that the weight of that might become an issue. It was almost looking like the whole entire thing might split. Had to get it done. Figured may as well just do it now. Not make a big thing out of it. I think the 2x4 and the ratchet straps probably would have been a better way to go. But this is more ideal aesthetically and as far as just ease goes to but <laughs> it's much easier to do it this way so uh, just have to wait and see since i'm in here it's gonna be loud from the fountain you're just gonna have to bear with me the super tunia persimmons look at how great they're looking over here pretty good right over here though on this side and not so much i don't i don't know what happened there not that far apart but this side does get significantly more sun than that side over there the solar panel was kind of on it but i don't I guess these do absorb light, right? That's the whole point. So maybe this got really hot and cooked it. Is what it is, nothing I can do about it. And then keep it watered and hope for the best. I could maybe give it a cut back. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea. Could rejuvenate it some, I don't know, we'll see. But yeah, that's done. Looks good, much better, much improved. I will pick up in the morning and you can look at the plants I picked up at the hardware store. Ugh, these look good too. Y'all don't get to see them from this angle very often because I don't usually venture into the pool with the camera. <laughs> Good morning. That took a lot longer than I thought it would. I figured he'd come right around it and be right in the camp. Doesn't matter. Hydrangea did pull forward just a little bit. Not that much considering the storms and rain we got last night. It was very nice. Lots of rain, lots of storm. Those didn't stand a chance to stand up on their own, so I just left them on their side last night. I was getting ready to turn the, the nice camera on and give everybody a good look at the plants that I picked up, but then I was thinking, I really need some more shrubbery for this area of the garden down here. I planted a whole bunch of hicks yews down there and there's some gaps in there and uh, there's another Home Depot that's closer to my house than the one that I was at yesterday and they had the Hicks used. It's where I got these from to begin with last time I was there and if they're 50% off this would be a good time to grab them. Also it's supposed to be like off and on storms all day and for the rest of the week. So who knows how the rest of this video is going to go. Basically I came out here, sat down at the table for about 20 minutes waiting for the lens to defog because it's extremely humid and then decided we should go back to the store and grab some more plants. Most of what I got is shrubbery. I'm not trying to tease everybody. You saw the Semper Vivums, you saw the succulents, you know about the Mandevilla. I got the topiaries and there's some yews and some hydrangeas and things. Just, you know, perennials. They're very expensive. You can get them for 50% off. You gotta snatch them up while you can and while they still look decent too, right? Yeah, paper shredding company. That's what you want to see right outside of a medical facility. What y'all been up to? I had a dream last night that there were lizards all over the house, and when you try and catch them to take them outside, they spun in a circle and fly up in the air. Probably because somebody had just sent me a video of some fireworks they were playing with, and they were the kind where you light them and they spin really fast and, go, phew, and shoot up into the sky. There's the end of story time. There were weird lizards. There's like some kind of gecko. They were like two or three feet long and skinny and just like rubber. Really floppy and weird, weird just spinny, floppy, gooey lizards. It wasn't a bad dream, it was fun. Just trying to catch lizards. I've been trying to put together the pieces of what that may have been about. Probably nothing, dreams don't always have to mean something. Likely because of what I just said about watching that firework video. Oh, 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 you know what I just realized? Nursery, right here on the way to the store. Should stop in here and see if they have Vinca. Oh, those cute little strawberry vanilla hydrangea standards. <sighs> I should be fast with everything I'm doing though because I have no idea when it's going to start raining. I have a feeling probably sooner than later. Plenty of hanging baskets. They look good too. These are really full. The Mediterranean mix. Those trailing, I love trailing Vinca so, so much. You can already tell just from standing right here that I don't think I'm going to see any of the tattoo ones, but that's all right. Eh? Nah. I don't think so. The plants look good though. Really big full. Nice looking annuals. Ooh, these are cool. No label, sorry. Candy Crush, one of my favorites. Look at these begonias. Great big begonia balls. Buy one, get one. Ugh, 
look at these bonsais. They're so stinking beautiful. It's a gruyere. Those roots, I'm not really gonna touch any of them. You just have to have a look at them from afar because some of these are very pricey. That's very cool. A pepper plant bonsai. I love that. Pardon the fan, squeaky fan. That was fun, but looking for clear. Good. Okay. Also, 50% off shrubs and roses. That's what wanted to see. Oh, I just did so much talking and I wasn't recording. I said, if you were ever at that nursery in St. Louis, Timberwinds, let me know. They have a great selection. Staff is very friendly. They checked their list for me to see if they could get the tattoo apricots and it doesn't look like that's going to happen, which is good to know. I can put an end to that chapter. They're looking at like ball seed and Ritter. Those are big growers around here, what everybody uses. And if it's not on their list, it's probably not on anybody else's too. Either is what I should say. Not on anybody else's list either. Hey, look what's over here. They got some of the red candy still. Nice. Very nice. I've decided I need more of those in my life. More than two. Yeah. I think four. Four is better. I already have one other, so that gives me five to play with. That'll be good to plant around something. Okay, and in comparison to the Home Depot y'all saw before, I gotta admit, this one's it's much better, right? And you saw all those plants. This place is always packed. I only usually go to that other one because it's right next to a Lowe's, so it's convenient for if I maybe need to go to two different places. Let's see what they have in there for 50% off. Mm -hmm. These look like Densifloras. They are dense of formis. Sorry. Any Hixie eyes? That's what I'm here for. Looking for the Hixies. That right there is a smaller dense of formis. No? Well, that's confusing. Is it 25% off or is it 50% off? The signs that are over the place say 50% off. So what's that about? Dense of formis doesn't matter if they don't have them. That's all right. I like the dense of formis. They're really nice U. This is what you want to plant for like a nice ball shape U. Is the Densiformis. Good green color, easy to prune. I'm just going with the Hixies and the Hilly Eyes because I need the nice tall structure for um, privacy. They're really nice though. I had toyed around with the idea. Here's some Hixie, Hixie Eyes right there. Yeah, that's that's not gonna cut it. Only five dollars though, that's a good deal. I was saying that I had toyed around with the idea of maybe planting some of the dense just because I do like their shape and everything. But filling in gaps need to manage, you know, the main bones of everything. I would say there should be a zone seven. Why is it here? It's a wax myrtle. J berry. So the bay berries, northern bay berries, hardy here. Wax myrtles on the fence. Depends on the winters that we have. They tend to not look great. Bay berries are usually a much better option. More hibiscus. It's that time of year for the hibiscus. Boxwoods looking okay. I mean, it's kind of okay. Not that great, but hey, 50% off. Some of these I wouldn't buy, but if they're mostly green, they should still be good. Dang it, I saw something out of the corner of my eye while I was talking about these stupid boxwoods and forgot what it, what, the thing was probably these. Probably the hydrangeas. Let's dance. Aren't they beautiful? These are the Let's Dance Arriba. Yeah? Yes, Arriba. This 50% off? Really? Ooh, and Brandywine Viburnums. Some of my favorite plants. They get these beautiful pink and kind of a purple berry on them. And the winter times they're a tag. There it is. Brandywine. If it were evergreen, I would plant more of those. I have one, and that's enough. When I go for Viburnums, I usually want evergreens. Aha, tough stuff. Lace cap type hydrangea. Those are nice too. Don't need more hydrangeas, but I don't know who's talking about need here. I really like the Ariba, but I have, my backyard is basically like 90% hydrangeas at this point. Not really, but it's getting up there. I have so many, which is fun. It's nice to have a variety of things. If these got bigger, I'd get some. It's two to three foot. And I have plenty of hydrangeas that stay on the two to three foot size. Hey, palm trees, little Robolinis, tiny little Adenidias, Lochesias that don't look like they're covered in spider mites. Whew, succulents are looking nice too. Cat palms, nice looking Japanese maples over there. Little arbs, I am not messing with arbs in July. You know how that's gonna go. It's not gonna go well. I'm trying to keep the ones I have alive right now. Y'all see in the direction those are heading. Always been a fan of the columnar Norway spruce. Really nice looking trees. Like really nice looking trees. Narrow, 20 to 30 feet. High, it takes them a long time to get up there, but they don't take that long to get like 12 to 18 feet somewhere in there. 
and then they slow down. 50 bucks. 20 to 30 foot tree. That's something to really have planned out as to where you're going to put it. That is so tempting. But those are like full blown trees, right? Need to have a plan for what you're going to do with those. I think everything else in here is just, you know, tropicals. Which, I don't know why I said it like that. I love tropicals, just not what I'm here for. I'm here for the sales. Okay, so my cart might be too big, but that's all right. There's still some other things to look at. I think I'm probably just going to check out and head back, though, so you can see what I got, and then maybe get some work done before the rain moves in. Okay, all right. Back to where things started. Well, where things started this morning with the plants. Cricket on the table. Yeah, they didn't have the Hixie I used, but I got the Hillies here, which is really... All I cared about, the Hixie eyes would have been a bonus. Like I said, I need like four more to fill in some gaps on the other side of that berm, but it's cool. These are hedge plants. While it's ideal to get the bulk of them planted at the same time, you can fill them with smaller ones over time as so long as they're planted appropriately together, spacing wise. The Hilly use Hilly Eye right here, if you want to know what I'm talking about. There's the label. These generally go about eight to 10 feet and three to four feet wide. So they're tall and narrow, hardy to zone four, I know they don't look like the most showy of plants, but there's something really lush about a U that I appreciate. And they give me Podocarpus vibes, which I also like. I needed eight, I already had four, so now I have four more, which means I can get this area up there on that hill taken care of after, well, I'm still waiting for a few more plants, but this whole area is gonna be gutted. And then I'm gonna do a hedge that goes from here and down not all the way but down to where the sun starts to meet up over there and i wanted to make sure that these would be able to be spaced at the three foot instead of the four foot just so i don't have to wait as long for them to fill in and uh, that should be pretty doable with the eight that i have now here are the others right here just fluffy green pillars that's all they are just fun green looking plants toxic so don't eat them don't let your pets or curious mouths around them but that's a general rule of thumb for pretty much anything we put in the garden, right? But they can be more dangerous for wildlife like deer. If you live in a place that doesn't have a lot of vegetation, then the ewes might get chewed on by deer. Around here, deer don't touch them. But I think in maybe it's Utah or, well, it's not Utah, Idaho, if there have been some issues with deer chewing on them and then dying. So read up about ewes in your local area before messing with them. And then I also have these gorgeous hydrangeas, don't they look beautiful? All right, yeah, not perfect, but whatever. They're 50% off. Ah, uh -huh, tough stuff. Looks real tough, doesn't it? Where's the tag? I don't remember if I showed these yesterday while I was at the nursery or not. There it is. Bluest acid, get some aluminum sul so lala, get some aluminum sulfate into the ground with them to keep them blue or else they will be pink. And, or maybe you have acidic soil and water that they'll like. I already had two of these, needed three, now I have four. So that's great. Got a bonus. That's perfect. The tough stuffs are hydrangeas that I want to try around the yard in containers this year. It's because they're supposed, I don't know why I went off that way when I'm talking about these right here. They're supposed to be good bloomers on new and old. Well, one of my, this isn't flowering. Look at that one. There we go. Isn't that lovely? Great big lace cap. Lace caps aren't always my favorites, but in the shade, I really do enjoy them. They have a great, I don't know, I guess it's a texture. There's an airiness about them. Something light and clean about those big lace cap flowers that they have on them. I had thought about putting those back here, but uh, I just don't think there's anywhere near enough light back behind all this stuff. Maybe, but probably not. That's the other thing about the U's. Shade to sun. Obviously, there's going to be some big growth differences with these, depending on whether you have them in shade or sun. I would say part shade to sun. Safer bet there, but I've had some in my front yard that are in pretty deep shade. I've never had any issues with them. It's nice, sturdy green plants and plants with lots of flowers or potential. They have potential. These will look great, trust me. Fun stuff, stuff that I had been hoping to find. So just a bonus to be able to get them at 50% off. And then this one right here, this was, it wasn't planned. This sage leaf willow called Iceberg Alley. It goes three to six foot by three to six foot. The foliage has a nice silvery fuzziness to it that you can't come on just it's just a disaster great silvery texture drought tolerant plants this will be good up in the hill garden formerly the dump garden still kind of a dump garden dump garden and hill garden over here down towards this gala apple that's the drier side of things over there and i think that just having some big silvery texture in front of some evergreens that will be planted in front of the fence down there so this fence panel from right here and down I have arbs to go there i'm just 
waiting till like mid-August. Things cool off a lot here in mid-August, and that's when I'll go ahead and put the rest of them in the ground because, well, you know. And I want some contrast with some textures and some colors. I think that that's going to look very nice over there. Y'all already know about the red candy. I keep, I don't, I was calling them Candy Mountain in my prior videos. I don't know why. That's not what they're called. It's just candy, red candy, compact red candy. My other one's purple candy. It's not purple candy mountain. I don't know why. Why I've been throwing the word mountain on there. Doesn't really matter. Oh yeah. Not a new plant, but beautiful fresh flowers opened up on this Cattleya yesterday. Smells absolutely divine. And this one, it's hard to show on camera. The flowers open up white and then they deepen to a purpley pink the next day. It have a beautiful throat, very large gross on it and I cannot remember its name. It's some sort of Lelia Catlia. I don't know. If I stumble across a tag, I'll let you know. Hey, we can get a little preview of that because I have hydrangeas over there and there's some green things. Look, beautiful. That silvery blue texture. It was a good price too. After the 50% off, I think it was like eight bucks. So that seemed like a no brainer. It's a nice size plant. Only downside to all these perennials, I'm going to have to be hand watering all these or set up a separate drip area for everything until I can get them in the ground. Isn't the end of the world. I'll probably find a shadier spot to tuck these into so that they don't need to be constantly watered. I don't want them sitting out over here <laughs> during the hottest part of the summer. It's the whole point of waiting to plant them is so that they're not stressed out during the hottest part of summer, right? That's an easy one to figure out. That's no big deal. Okay, and now the lollipops. And I thought these had said green velvet on them somewhere. This just says assorted. Okay, well, there was one that I didn't get that was a little bit smaller than these that said green velvet topiary. These just say assortment, so let's hope they're nice and sturdy. 50% off, though. I mean, come on. That's a great price. These more than likely are not actually even going to be planted here at my house. Just enjoy them while you can. I do have a couple spots with some containers, some urns that I think that these would look fantastic in, but I don't have the best luck with boxwoods and containers during the winter time. In order for them to do well, I usually have to wrap the containers in something and then wrap the entire plant in something and it still end up with some winter burn on them. They just need to go in the ground. And in the ground, I don't know if I have any spots that I love for them, but at my sister's house and another friend's house, they have some spots, both new houses with bare landscaping where these would look great. And I think that they would love to have these in their landscaping. So I have a whole nother area of garden that I haven't even started on yet. It's not even garden yet that I would like to develop into garden. That will be in the video when it's time. Just gotta wait for things to cool off some more. Like I said, mid-August, something like that. And then these might look good over there. We'll see. Cause I would like to hold on to them, but kind of formal for my yard. I think they'd be great in the fall through winter and even spring. These in a little urn with a bunch of Easter eggs around the base. Oh, oh. All right, that's too much. It's not that special. They're just topiaries. Big ass coleus, a Kong coleus, no tag, just one of the big Kong coleus. I didn't do any coleus so far this year. The past couple of years, I had been avoiding them because I found them to be mealybug magnets and the mealybugs have been a thing for the last few years. I don't want them everywhere, but I do like the Kongs and it's a fun one to have around. I have a spot that could use some color that's in a shadier area. And that's the perfect thing for a shadier area that could use some color. It gets morning sun, so it's not like totally shaded, but that's still perfect for a coleus. Or one of the Kong coleus even. And then y'all remember the six pack of Sempervivums, right? Talked about those, think so. 13 bucks for a six pack, not bad, but then the Home Depot I went to today, I managed to nab these up because these were on sale. For some reason that six pack over there wasn't. All these, 750 a pop, and they are absolutely overflowing with Sempervivum. At the cobweb kind, the little sun nuggets, whatever they're called. Most of them are done flowering. That's fine, I don't even care about that. This is going to be more than enough to plant up those boots over there, which we should probably try and do in this video. I'd like to get that done. And then the rest, there is a rock wall at a, another person's house that wants to fill in with Sempervivum and Sedum. Then, well, 750 a pop. That's the way to go. Section these out, one, two, three, four, five. You can get at least, at least six different sections out of each one of these to plant up in different areas. And they'll just spread and that'll go a very long way. And they have some great types in here too. Like, look at the color on this one. Isn't that nice? Oh, well, it's because it's getting ready to bloom. That's why, when they're getting ready to flower, they go all wonky and the colors get pretty crazy. So these two right here, can you see them? I can't point, I'm holding the thing up. They're about to do this and flower, which is fun too, because Sempervivums have really cool looking flowers on them, especially when they're like actually something you can look at. Oh, I didn't even realize on this side of the container. There's some right there. Isn't that fun? 
of neat flowers on those. Mama plant dies after those flowers come up, which is fine. That's why they put out all these little babies. Plenty more to use and plenty more to spread around. You know, before moving on, I still have some more fun stuff to show. Some really fun stuff that I got from the nursery from Timberwinds. These hens and chicks have me pretty excited and I want to get those boots. You know, what, you know what I'm talking about. These right here, the boots. They were in last week's video and I was like, oh, I need to get them planted up. I don't know, I don't have all the stuff I need. Well, now I do. I have to bring y'all up really high. It's one of those projects that's just been bugging me. These have been sitting on the patio now for a week and I would like for them to be on the front porch. Try and get as much of those old roots out of there as I can. The mix that's already in this, it's one that drains really, really well. The Semper Vivums, they don't need anything all that rich. So I'm not going to bother with taking all this stuff out. I'm looking inside, lots of perlite. Drainage is the main thing to be concerned about there and these should, that should be fine. Plenty of drainage. Top this off, it's just an all-purpose potty mix I added a good amount of sand to, probably like, I don't know, 40 to 50% sand. It's very sandy. Okay, and then this one right here looks like it's basically, hey, look at that, the camera actually focused. Don't know why, didn't change any of the settings. It's been giving me trouble. I think I'm gonna go with this one. I looked at the other three. This one has the least amount of flowers to disturb. The blooms on these work their way from the, I spoke too soon about the focusing, didn't I? The flowers work their way from the bottom to the top. So all these are dead buds and what's left are right up here. So that means this one's basically done. So I'm gonna pop this out. Oh, hey, those are pretty good roots. I don't really know why I'm acting surprised about that. This is in flower, so clearly they're happy, healthy plants, right? There will be some that end up falling. Sometimes I like to go through and just use my fingers to let the loose ones pop out on their own. I think I could probably just maybe try and get this right down the middle. I'm going to try and focus on where I know the main clumps are. There's a big clump here and a couple of clumps there. So I'm going to just get in here and gently pull, putting most of the pressure down below, really just using my hand to stabilize things up here. I don't want to squish the plants. Let me see my fingers down here. They're actually up in there, kind of guiding this entire thing. And this chunk right here should come out just fine. I think I might have to loosen it up right here a little bit. Otherwise, yeah, okay, that's good. And there we have it, a little Semper Vivum loaf to work with. And that should, in theory, oh, I put too much soil in. I have to move some of that soil out because I wasn't anticipating their roots being so well developed. That worked out perfectly, didn't it? A nice little ring of Semper Vivums right in the top there. And get some of that out of here. This clump is the one that actually has all of the flowers on it, so it may not be quite as easy to manipulate and move around, but I think that it should still fit in fairly smoothly. Just don't want to squish any of the plants. I'm trying to use my fingers down here to do most of the pushing and maneuvering to get it in place. It's beautiful. Okay, this part's not going to be fun. If there's a gap in here I'm going to have to fill in. That's probably going to take a few minutes. It's a very narrow opening. Just be patient and it'll get done. There'll be some soil that needs to be washed off of the top of these. With the heat that we're having right now, that's not a problem. I'm not worried about water getting in the middle of those. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I'm gonna go give this a rinse and can have a better look at it. Okay, I don't think I turned the camera, did I? Nope, nope, left the camera on for all that. This is why I burn through batteries and it takes forever to upload your files. That looks great, doesn't it? That's exactly what I wanted for this. There's still some soil up in there, but that'll continue to wash out over time. I put some soil back into the container that they came in and I'll use that to drop all the little, well, not like that. That was sloppy, not how I intended it to be by figure as I go through all three that are left of these, then there's gonna be more that pop off. I should, should really pack that swell down some more. You get the point, these will root out and then we'll have the same thing again. Just like these up here. So this is going on the front porch, morning sun, afternoon shade, an area that's a pain to water and I don't have a drip that I can't, well, I have a drip I could run to these, I just don't bother. It seems like a stupid thing to do, not for the boots. And that's why Semper Vivum, not that Semper Vivum, hens and chicks that is, not that they don't need to be watered, they absolutely do. Depending on your climate, oftentimes these do really well for a lot of people if you just plant them and leave them alone. As long as you don't live in a climate that's, you know, it's places where you're up to like 120 degrees, that's probably not great for them. Evergreen to semi evergreen. I might move these to a more sheltered place during the winter time just to help get them by. I think that'd be a smart thing to do. And really in the spring, I will more than likely be dividing this up because this is, it's so full that there's not much more it can do. These little chicklets that come out, the little babies, the runners. Okay, these want to be in contact with soil down below so that they can put out roots and 
keep things moving and growing. But for right now, it just looks nice. It looks cute and I'm happy with it. All right, that was fun. I feel better now. I want to get back to looking at new plants. I already know about the Mandevilla and the Echeveria that was down here, the uh, Esmeralda with the big flowers on it. That's a nice looking etch, isn't it? That's gonna be beautiful. Can't wait for that to open up and flower. I had to repeat that three times. So I kept kicking the camera. Okay, and now look at all the, you can't. All right, and here it is. This is all the stuff I got from the nursery. There's some really cool begonias in here. For now, I wanna focus on, look at, did you see it? Sea grape, bonsai start. I've wanted to do a sea grape bonsai for a very, very, very long time and just never liked any of the ones that I saw online. Didn't really trust what they would show up looking like. This is the only one I've seen in person that was available to buy. Of course, I jumped right on it. The cut is, well, it's what you're gonna get with a sea grape that you don't start on your own from a plant that has a single stem, right? Sea grapes are really fun plants. Look at the leaves. And these will get bigger as the plant gets bigger too. Definitely one that you gotta stay on top of with the pruning because they want to grow. It's going to require a good amount of watering and TLC, that's for sure. But this is still in soil, right? That's not in a bonsai type mix. So I could move it over into a training pot. I don't think I'm going to. I have a couple of containers that I think this may look nice in. I don't know if they're gonna be quite big enough for it though. It is a tropical, so this has to come inside during the winter time. It'll need to be in the grow space during the winter time on top of that because they really do like some heat and some warmth. I don't think this would do great in the house. At least not in my house drier air during the winter, pretty cool. I just don't see it being happy inside. But in the growth space, I think it would more than likely do well. I don't know, we will see. It's going to be an experiment, so I'm not going to go over the top working with it. Going to have to keep it pruned. These are quick growers. It's a sea grape, right? Essentially a weed for anybody who lives in a place with sandy soil. I just love those great big glossy shiny leaves that they have. And this has a pretty good shape for what it is and for what it costs. This is out of everything I got, that's the I'm the most excited about that because I've wanted one of these for such an incredibly long time, which I already said, you already know that. It's beautiful. I love my little sea grape, giant leaves and little chunky trunk. Pins and chicks for days, some really neat specialized begonias. Then the mandevilla vines, so I'll be getting planted up here, hopefully this week. Well, maybe I'll wait until it's time to film again. I have a couple of trellises. You can kind of see one right there to go behind these queen palms, and that's what those mandevillas will grow up. They're not very big, so it's gonna be a while so you can even actually see what they'll look like. They have to grow up and get higher, so I don't really think that'd be worthy of filming because there won't be anything to see. They'll be hidden for a while. There it is, golden hours. See how the sun's coming through? There's like a 10, 15 minute window where the sun comes through at this beautiful angle, lights the plants up and brings out all kinds of great details on them. Makes everything look so nice. You know what I mean by narrow? Like, it's a very narrow, pointed direct beam of light. I mean, the beauty part of it by talking through it. Okay, well, this has been fun. I will talk about everything going on over here in the next video. I ended up talking about it in this one, but in like a, I don't want to talk about it yet because they're special plants. And then I figured, well, I should just, just don't even talk about them. Never mind, you didn't see those. Talk about them in a different video. Then likely the one that comes out after this one. Gosh, so pretty. Such a gorgeous plant. I love those leaves on there. Cut a bit rough. The work that's been done on it was done well. Probably need to get this potted up into what I would like to have it in and start any wiring that I want to do on this while there's still some green in there and these are still nice and flexible. I don't know. I might give it another prune first. Have to make up my mind on that. Glad to have finally gotten that planted up and take, I don't know why I said finally, it was just last week that I remembered that I needed to do that. Not like it's something that's been hanging over my head all summer long, but now I can get them off the patio, take them to the front porch. That's where those belong. And have some things for the seashell planters to work with here and more goodies to tuck into some other containers. That's what I wanted. And a great amount of shrubbery, lots and lots of nice shrubbery for cheap. That's the best part cheap shrubbery. Hey, thanks for hanging out. Comment down below, say hi. Love talking to everybody. What's going on in your gardens? I'm you know, on the pause. I think I basically made that point, didn't I? Mid to upper 90s, pushing triple digits. It's usually only like this for like four weeks out of the summer. So aside from working with some annuals and plants that I know I can keep in the shade, some tropicals, I'm not doing much with the landscaping as long as I can resist. I'm not gonna be able to resist for very long though. Once I see a forecast that's showing temps that are more like upper 80s to mid 90s, somewhere in there, just a little shift down, that'll last for about two weeks. 
then I'll go ahead and start digging and plopping more stuff in the ground. There's been no shortage of new plants in the ground this year, but I should do a count sometime. There's a lot of new stuff going on out here. Now I have more new Semper Vibums. Uh, one thing I didn't mention, I could go through all of these and pluck out every single last one of them that's dangling over the edge of the pot because it's the same thing like I was saying, if it's not on top of the soil, they'll hang there for a pretty long time and dangle and look nice. They only have one attachment going to one of the ones that's flowering, then they need to be on top of soil because once this is done flowering. All right, this one isn't actually attached to these, but just imagine that it was, and that was the only thing it was attached to. When this one's done flowering right here at the mama, that's going to die. And then this one doesn't have anything to live off of because it's not sitting on top of soil. So that's all I was getting at. I could go around and pluck off all of those and get them into a mix right now if I wanted to. It might be something that's fun to do when I'm just chilling outside and just like pluck some hens and chicks and work them in here. I need to remember, I need to pack this down before I start doing anything else with it. Didn't I say I was going to go? Yeah, it's time to go. Anyways, hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, great life, and everything's going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, keep on growing. Bye bye. Hey, Turbs. Turbo, can you say hi? Oh, hello. I forgot to mention the hydrangea trees over there. You licked in my hand? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, that's enough. Yeah, I uh, double checked those. They haven't moved. Figured I should probably say something about that before the video's over. I turned. Oh, say bye, everybody. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.